The Matrix Kyler Phillips has not only experienced a resurgence in his career, but he has established himself as a bantamweight contender in the most formidable fighting organization on the planet. After concluding his regional career with a record of 5-1, and one, competing on platforms such as the Contender Series and the Ultimate Fighter back in 2018, since making his big league debut in 2020, he has matched his regional career against the elite of the elite with an impressive 5-1 record through 2023. His UFC journey has been marked by two finishes and an additional three performance or fight of the night bonuses showcasing his undeniable talent and potential to excel in the grandest stage of mixed martial arts. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of Kyler the Matrix Phillips in this career highlight video. Oh, Till's out! It's over! No. It's over! It's over! This is what I'm saying, boy! Oh! He got dropped it's over! It's over, Munoz! Oh, my God! Tyler Phillips has been at the MMA lab his entire mixed martial arts career, and he is a staple and an ideal product from that gym. The young 20-year-old would take on a brief one-year amateur career, filling it with finishes. He'd split the finishes with two via submission and two via knockout. This clear dominance indicated he was ready to turn it pro, and his pro career would start much of the same, jump starting with four straight wins and a contender series opportunity nearly around the show's inception in 2017. The youngest fighter on the card would also be the biggest favorite on the card and would also have the fastest finish on the card. Stopping James Gray in under 50 seconds, Kyler would have an impactful UFC performance and the extremely impressive finish paired with a combined nine wins and eight stoppages with no losses, he'd get an offer for the ultimate fighter. The catch? It'd be up a weight class in the featherweight division. Phillips would not stray from the challenge and took it head on, and he was picked first by Team Miocic, a clear feather in his cap. However, he'd suffer adversity, failing to win a round on the show, losing his first bout against Tough 27 winner and future UFC fighter Brad Katona, losing via unanimous decision. DC's Brad Katona, who was also a bantamweight coming onto the show, would show an impressive game using his outside leg kick a ton and his grappling game to stop Tyler Phillips in his tracks from getting anything creative going. And this would be a tough loss for him in the first round of the Ultimate Fighter. This loss would have him back on the regional track to gain more experience, and he'd lose his second straight in his return fight to CXF via split decision against a fighter with nearly four times the professional experience. In the CXF loss, it was against Victor Henry, who was a product of Josh Barnett's coaching. Victor Henry's, who had four losses, was never finished, and it felt like after a dominant first round from Kyler Phillips, Victor Henry started to put it on him later into the fight as Kyler Phillips got a little more tired. This was something that Kyler Phillips would need to fix later on in his career, and he did that would cause him to have major success in the UFC. But even with the two losses, this would be his only actual pro defeat because the ultimate fighter is judged as exhibition MMA. But it would just take him one more performance in the LFA, a huge head kick knockout to get him back into the UFC in a massive debut against another fighter with only one loss, Gabriel Silva. And this would be on a UFC on ESPN card, so he would skip over another shot at the Contender Series. He would get straight on the UFC on ESPN card, and he would have a fight of the night with Gabriel Silva. This would be the main event of the prelims for Figueroa versus Benavidez, and Kyler Phillips quickly reminded UFC fans of his creativity in the strike and his super exciting stand-up style. Throwing an absolutely ridiculous 102 significant strikes and landing 50% of them in just the first round. Phillips got a wide 30-27 unanimous decision on the night and solidified himself as a prospect in the division. And it's also notable that Phillips was in control on the ground nearly 2-1 to one against a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt in Gabriel Silva. After that impressive UFC debut, his next stop would be Fight Island, Yas Island, and he'd take on Englishman Cameron Els, and Phillips would stop him inside two rounds in a dominant performance. He'd land a takedown in the first round and never give up top control throughout the entire time, and then he would get another takedown early in the second round, stopping Els with elbows from back mount and it would just show a huge step in Kyler Phillips' game that he is starting to bring his grappling up. And as a wrestler, he is extremely untelegraphed. His shots come from nowhere and they're super fast. He finds the hips of his opponent and a lot of opponents have had difficulties stopping his takedown or timing the defense. And this is just super impressive from the early career Kyler Phillips, who was more a stand-up creativity kind of guy who did show a little bit of wrestling to becoming one of the better near best wrestlers in the bantamweight UFC division. And then in his next fight, probably his most impressive win. Looking back, Kyler Phillips defeated Song Yudong as a plus 150 under 
underdog via unanimous decision. Song Yadong ate massive shots in the first round, a clean head kick, a huge right hand, but that was an extremely impressive performance by Kyler Phillips, who looked more impressive on the feet and was overwhelming with his wrestling, finding takedowns whenever he wanted to, if he was ever put in a precarious position, would shoot a double or a single, and had great success on his takedown attempts. From there, he would actually lose his next UFC fight, but no stranger to adversity, he would bounce straight back from that fight of the night loss, another fight of the night, another feather in the cap of Kyler Phillips as an exciting, super watchable fighter, and he would take on and defeat Marcelo Rojo with a submission in the third round, and then he would take on Rayoni Barcelos, who is a great striker. He'd come in at minus 205, and he'd again win a pretty wide unanimous decision against Barcelos. And in his two most recent UFC performance, as mentioned, he was an average minus 300 favorite, and he's getting that love and respect from bookmakers again, coming in as the minus 225 favorite against the veterans veteran of the UFC and Pedro Munoz, who will put up a serious competition for the up and coming super exciting Kyler Phillips. But that will do it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to Combat Sports Central, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.